Welcome to Mole Mama. I'm so excited. I have Susana, the sassy Hello. chef, Hello. in Maui, and she's going to be um, cooking a very traditional dish for us today. This is a pork lao lao. This is probably the most primal, authentic Hawaiian dish that I can think of from the islands. The first inhabitants, the Polynesians, would come over and bring pigs, bring taro, bring things like that. So taro is a big part of it. So I have some nice local fresh taro leaves here. I have a, uh, some banana leaves and some nice tea leaves. We're going to be steaming some pork here. And normally you put it in an emu, which is um, underground. They dig a nice pit with bamboo and banana leaves and steam and slowly cook the meats in there. Um, and I'll have that, so we're going to have to do it a different way. Um, some people like to use foil instead, and we'll make it just a little packet in, in a more modern way. But if you're going to make an authentic Hawaiian dish, I think it's best to stick to the roots and what's natural. And then this part of the taro, we're actually going to eat the taro leaves and the roots. I mean, the stems, I'm sorry. So that's part of it. And that spinach or something else isn't going to be the same if you substitute that, I don't think. And then you can do the banana leaves to wrap it in, or you can use the tea leaves. The tea leaves are more traditional. Um, now, I know Mahali cooking a Hawaiian dish, so um, <laughs> I hope all the aunties out there will forgive me, but I mean this with the utmost respect. <laughs> that being said, and out of the way. Aloha, and we're going to cook this dish. Let's okay. See. That was very, very simple. I just have some nice local pork butt here. It's got a nice bit of fat on it because you want that to make the nice flavor. I have little bits of this black cod. It's also called butterfish. Just a few chunks of that is what they add to it. So I'm going to take this and just add some sea salt over the top. Nice, healthy amount. And this is a very deceptively simple dish. That can be a little intimidating, I think. But don't be intimidated by it. It's okay. It's going to be great. So where did you get these leaves? Did you pick them? Or? So I picked these leaves um, locally. Wow. Just from the side of the road. I just don't have this property because, you know, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but they, most of these leaves go everywhere. And actually you can find the tea leaves or luau leaves as some people call them. I'm sorry, not, not the tea leaves. These are found growing all over the place here in the country. Uh, banana leaves, everyone has bananas everywhere. So you can buy these at some Asian markets. Taro or the luau leaf here, you can buy these in markets too. Um, if you need, if you can't find them, these are a little, a little bit harder to find. This here, we want to use this main leaf to wrap with, and the stem we're actually going to use it eat as well. So let me get this here a little more. So I'm going to cut off. Just try to pick the best ones that are in the best condition that aren't too torn, the poles or anything that are nice looking. This one looks really good. This one looks really good. So I kind of want to cut, kind of similar to. Um, well, you want to cut off that edge, basically, that ridge there, the hard ridge. You don't want to keep that hard part in there, but you also don't want to cut all the way through the leaf. You don't want a hole in the leaf, either. Just take a nice, good paring knife and just carefully kind of cut that part out. And if you mess it up, that's okay. We have plenty more tea leaf. I mean, I'm um, allowing leaf here for you. So, just cut the kind of hard piece out there so the leaves nice and flat. Keep some tea leaves, blue owl leaves, taro leaves. The taro leaves. Now I cut those like that. Getting a little bit of that spine there, so it's not so hard. And who taught you how to make this? Um, I have just been learning from different people. I've watched videos and talked to locals, and most locals are just like, "Oh, you just do this, is this? It's no big deal." But for you, I want to make sure I get it right. So <laughs> I've I've talked to multiple people about it and how they make them. Um, Hawaiian families are all about Hawaiian like families. It's just about ohana. It's about being together, and you see everyone doing this, something like this together. They're all in the garage or in their backyard just making a bunch of these little, they look like little gifts when they're done. And they're all sitting there doing it together. The moms, the aunties, the, the dads, everyone's all together. And it's a kind of a family thing. So it's kind of neat, because that's really important to them. Um, and it's really everyone. All, to me, all cultures are about family and enjoying food together and making things from scratch, you know? So I've got these nice stems here. I'm going to cut off the harder parts of the ends, make them a little more tender part. I'm going to use that tender part. We're just going to boil it in a little bit of salted water. So just going to salt the water decently. And then I'm going to cut these. Won't be perfect or anything, but these will get nice and tender when you put them inside. And I don't know if like you buy the pre-made lao lao out here, I don't think they use this in it, but from what I've learned from other people is that this is what they this is what they like to do more traditionally with their families. And it's also about using the whole product, using what you have and using it all. 
So um, I'm going to have Dan come over here and help me roll. So we got the taro roots sliced and boiling. We got our salted meat here. I take the leaf, lay it flat. Let's just wash your hands. I'm going to tell you one more thing. If you're going to be wrapping them in the tea leaves, so this part is going to be edible. It's going to be nice green, um, almost like a collard greens. It's going to be edible, delicious. It'll break down and be soft. This one is more like a steaming basket. It's going to kind of keep it. We're going to fold it over itself like this. So this part is not going to be edible. But see, it looks like a package. Isn't that cute? Um, so this part too, you want to take that hard rim. This is the hard, kind of more challenging part. And you want to kind of cut it down so that it's not it's a little more challenging than the other one. But get a good sharp, sharp paring knife. You kind of cut that rim off of it so it's not the hard edge, so it's more pliable and um, bendable. So I already did that with these ones, so it's pre-done. So it takes a little bit of time, and I try to be very careful not to damage the leaf. So I'm going to make sure you have multiple ones. Just keep going until it's more pliable and bendable to fold. All right, so we have our taro leaf here. And we're going to make a little burrito, essentially, out of it. Okay. We have some big chunks of meat. We usually do about three to make sure the salt is kind of all rubbed around. Three big chunks of meat and just a couple pieces of fish you put in there. Okay. So go ahead and do that. All right. Put it right there. Now we take the bits of the boiled um, taro stem there, just been salted and boiled. We add that into it and then we fold it up this way. Turn this up. On this side. On this side. And we'll fold it over like a burrito. A taro burrito. There we go. And I've seen people tie it with string or they tie it in other things. Um, I'm going to take this here. This here, just crisscross it. Put this in the center. And to fold it up, you get a little present. And each one gets its own casing, or if you have room, you can put two in there. You can fit two in there. Okay. You can do that, or three, depending on the size and how much you want to put in there. So this is a little more tricky because we don't have the string, so I've seen the local aunties kind of do this where they take the leaves and kind of bend it around itself. And that is a little tricky. You can totally use the bamboo and just tie it with string, which is easier. I like the way this looks. I like that you don't have to use anything else but the leaf. So I'm not as good as the aunties at doing this, but you want to end up with a little present like this. And then you take this and you just steam it. You steam it for around, um, pretty much food meat is in there. You steam it from around three and a half to four hours. You want it to be super, super tender. And all this beautiful taro leaf is going to just fall apart and turn to this nice kind of spinachy collard green special flavor. Uh, so now if you want to use the bamboo, I mean the, um, sorry, the um, banana leaf instead. So it's big, so it's a little scary looking. Take a nice knife, just kind of cut it up. But this is definitely a lot easier when you have the string. So when you have a string, you tie around it, it'll hold it together a lot better. But you can kind of take it, see like a strip, and kind of fold it. So I'll take this out and show you. Look how pretty that is. I think it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful and it's so nice. So with this here, um, I kind of messed it up because I tore it, but just so you get the idea, you can kind of fold this over. Fold this over. Like that. And then tie it with a string and hold it together. And you steam it. And it's just a little pocket of like delicious tender meat and a little bit of fish and salt. And it's just so simple. But very the most traditional thing I can find that represents wine culture at its core, really. Um, but the influence is so interesting because of the immigrants that settled here for the plantation workers. Um, you have the big um, Portuguese influence, which is why you see the Portuguese sausage, you see a lot more spicy food. You have the Filipino culture that was here as well. So you see adobo used a lot, Chinese, Japanese, Korean as well. So all the food here is just a complete mix up of melting pots and cultures. And it really is a unique place when it comes to food. And it's always a tricky question when people go, what is Hawaiian food? I'm like, well, it's a lot of it. It's Polynesian, essentially, and all these other influences. And people are very proud of their culture. And it's a very fun, mixed thing. And I mean, I think what most of the world is becoming is just a big melting pot. And it's a beautiful thing. We all share it together and enjoy each other's food and influences. So yeah, this is going to be our pork lao lao. <laughs> I hope you like it. This is our pork lao lao. I had it in the steamer for about almost three hours and pulled it out. See how that taro leaf is nice and just cooked down. It looks beautiful, like a nice spinach. This one's steamed in banana leaves. This part is not edible, but I have the taro stem in there. I have a little bit of fish and the pork. And it's all lovely and they're ready to eat. You can serve this as a side of steamed rice or some local mac salad, which is very popular here. People love their mac salad. Oh, my style's a little different. Give it a try. But yeah, definitely you can just eat it like this. 
eat some rice, I'll be sure you if you want, which is soy sauce, Hawaiian soy sauce. And there you go. Pork valda. Enjoy. It's better than what you get any of the luau's from the um, resorts. So make it yourself. It's not that hard. Mahalo, mole mama. Mm -hmm. Mahalo, sassy chef. <laughs>